Hello, I'm Walt Bartman. I'm the founder and director of the Old Barn Studio, Glen Echo. And, um, you know, we have today, we have a, a really well-known artist that's just joined us as a faculty member, uh, Ken Conley. And Ken and I have quite a history together. We were just talking about the fact that we um, have been, uh, we've known each other for 30 years. And, uh, you know, when I think in terms of artists in Washington, Ken is one of the ones that I always think about. And honestly, I feel, you know, him joining us is going to be a great opportunity for those of you that are watching this video to take a class with him. I, I think that, you know, you're going to talk about having a, a great teacher. Uh, Ken's one. So Ken, welcome. Hi. Hi. Well, it's great to see you. And I uh, nice to see you too. I'm glad to be on board. Yeah, what we're what we're going to do now is we just want to talk a little bit. And I I really think um, you ought to just uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. That's the that's the main thing right now. So can you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background and uh, you know, and then we're going to really look at your work and talk about what you okay. do with students. So um, yeah, so uh, I born and raised in Northern Virginia. Seven Corners, Falls Church area. Um, I was always interested in art. I Something that I would do, I used to copy the, uh, you know, the funny pages when I was a little kid. And I just, I just drew all the time. And I was fortunate that my parents uh, uh, helped me with that. The, the Corcoran had a Saturday, they had Saturday's kids program. And my father would drive me into town and drop me off. And I'd take that, uh, I'd take that, class and, uh, and then he picked me up so that's that's what I did I was uh, you know I was usually the one that people would ask to draw something you know in high school <laughs> Ken will you draw this for me um, when I uh, got to college I wasn't so sure what to do because in my high school there wasn't a path a defined path for um, becoming a visual artist um, it was really neglected in the high school level. Actually, I stopped taking art classes in high school. But when I, I found myself, I kept coming back to it again and again. I tried tried uh, to be a business major. I tried other things, but I just kept coming back to uh, the visual arts and uh, wherever I was studying. So um, I took classes at North Virginia Community College. And then I transferred into, uh, and I went to the Corcoran for, as, a, as an adult student. And then I transferred into American University. A Corcoran, I wasn't getting at the time, I wasn't getting what I needed from the Corcoran. So I went to AU um, and um, I found a community of artists, of working, uh, practicing artist teachers, you know, and the, they were excellent. You know, I, I've been, I've taken classes in lots of places and uh, they stood out. They really knew what they were talking about. They were well-informed. They were skilled, knowledgeable, uh, incredibly smart. Uh, and I just felt as though I had found my home. So um, uh, the Robert Darista, I studied with Robert Darista at uh, American University. And he left and uh, moved up to Boston and started teaching at Boston University. So I followed him up to Boston and... Uh, enrolled in the graduate program at Boston University. Uh, after that, I came back uh, to DC, um, newly married, came back to DC and um, um, worked with the Washington Studio School. Uh, I was, while well, I was an undergraduate, I uh, helped the Washington Studio School uh, uh, in, in a small way, uh, developing some of the administrative, administration of the school. Uh, enrollments, say uh, art sales, uh, uh, publicity, et cetera, et cetera. All of the all of that type type of uh, stuff is what I was involved in. And then after graduate school, I came back and I started teaching there. And eventually, I became um, one of two full time instructors. The other was Lee Newman, and and also a co chair of the board of directors. As the board of directors at the time, all of the artists that taught at the school were also members of the board of directors. So I've taught all over town. Uh, I've taught as an adjunct at many different places, uh, American University, Georgetown University, et cetera, et cetera. 
and community colleges. Uh, I taught for 15 years at Prince George's Community College. Uh, I taught for a long time at Montgomery College in Rockville. And um, I also um, taught full-time at uh, a small liberal arts college in Western Pennsylvania of Washington and Jefferson College. So I've had a, 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 a I've, I've had a lot of experience teaching in a lot of different places. And I know I, one reason I'm at the Yellow Barn is because of Walt. And Walt has really done a remarkable job of building community. And uh, that appeals to me greatly. I know, a place to uh, learn and grow myself along with my students. So that's, that's, that sounds great. And you know, God, our lives parallel each other so much. I mean, you know, I got on a streetcar and, and rode into Pittsburgh to do Saturday morning art classes. And yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't take art in high school because I just didn't reach what I was doing, you know? And then, and then of course my, my life came to Washington. And when I did, we studied under the same people. And this is what's really unique. And I think it was a period, a lot of people don't know about this, but that was a great period at AU with the, the instruction that was there. And we had a lot of the top uh, artists of the time who came and spoke and uh, reviewed student work and, and that. And I feel, you know, we really benefited. And, you know, Ken and myself, with all the years that we, the experience that we have, and I don't know, I'm sure it's 50 years, Ken. I, I took my count and I think it's right about there, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in there, anyhow. And uh, the thing is with that, we have such a, a, a lot of knowledge to share with you. And having Ken join me, I think at the Yellow Barn really is make, gonna make a real difference in the way uh, this our program grows. Uh, he brings a dimension that I, I just feel uh, you know, we need, all right? And uh, those of you that uh, are looking for someone who's had experience teaching at universities and, uh, you know, we're talking about a university instructor now. We're not talking about somebody who's just started teaching and, you know, progressing as an artist. There's a lot more to learn. And we studied under some of the top people in the country. And I think the um, thing is with that, we were able to really pass that on to our students. So I, I feel I feel great about having you. I mean, really, truly, I think this is uh, going to help uh, our program uh, grow, and uh, you know, see you as a, a a real center and an important instructor. So with that, um, you know, the thing that I, I I got some questions to ask you. So that's what I'm sure. looking. They're on my phone, but uh, as an artist teacher, how did you develop that? How did you take that as a career? Uh, I think it goes back to AU. I was so inspired by the uh, uh, teacher painter, the artist uh, artist uh, instructor. Uh, I was so inspired by them that I, I thought that I'd like to give back. I'd like to teach too. And that that would keep me painting, keep me thinking about painting. And also, I could give something back to my students. So it was definitely uh, the uh, faculty at AU that inspired me to do it uh, as a career. Yeah, and you know that that that's myself as well. I mean, you know, we I had the opportunity to start the Yellow Barn, and you know, it was all about community. It's all about, uh, and we have at the Yellow Barn for the people that are watching. Um, we have about thirty-five instructors that are teaching at the Yellow Barn. That's how we've grown. I started with myself and two other instructors, and and that was back. Uh, God, I can't even remember. All right, but the um, uh, you know uh, the Yellow Barn started in 1994, so I'll give you an idea. But I was at Glen Echo before that, and you know what you were saying about different er schools in the area. Yeah, I taught at the uh, Montgomery College as well. So it's very interesting. We this is a, this is the way it works, you know. Uh, so. Uh, this is uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just kind of um, share the screen because I think that the most important thing here now is for you to get to know who Ken is and you're going to get to know who Ken is by his work. And I think this is the, the thing he's dedicated himself to really growing as an artist, finding himself. And, you know, this is one of the things I think we're, we both share. We're not trying to make carbon copies, but we really do give, uh, uh, you know, our students uh, uh, you know, the kind of uh, place to start, but also the energy, I think, and the passion. And I think this is what uh, you're going to bring to our program, I know. So, um, all right, so here we go. 
Uh, hope everything everything is working. All right. So this is this is it. Uh, this is Ken uh, Ken's work. All right. And uh, uh, as you see, this is one of his self portraits. Uh, Ken joining us uh, here at the Yellow Barn. I think uh, you know for those of you just starting to watch this video, you know uh, he's uh, bringing a, a lot of experience. So with that, I thought maybe we could just. Uh, you know, talk about this and, uh, you know, you can go ahead and, and and tell me what you want to say about your work. All right. This is it. Okay. So um, I, I think I have two fundamental approaches uh, to drawing. One is working from the inside out. And the other is working from the outside in. So what I mean by that is uh, sometimes I concentrate on edges and sometimes I don't. I just concentrate on gesture. Uh, edges and gesture are important in all drawings, but sometimes I, I start them in different ways, which uh, which presents different opportunities for me as I'm drawing. I like to not have a clear idea of what it's going to look like. I don't plan it so much. Is I respond to something that I'm looking at. I respond to something seen instead of planning it. Um, I also want to include... I, I, I try and make clear that it that this kind of work is very different from a camera. You know that our vision is uh, unique to ourselves, and we're not cameras. So um, that's why you'll see. And one reason you'll see an active line is because each time I look, I'll see a different edge or a different line. Also, I use charcoal uh, often because of uh, its spontaneity, its uh, fluidity. I try and respond emotionally. To what it is that I see, I can't. It's almost like I can't help it. I can't help <laughs> responding emotionally to what I see. Well, you know, that's it. I, I think that what we're going to get from you is someone who really understands feeling, all right, and how you bring feeling to piece of work. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the portrait on the left. I, I don't know if I'm going to hit the nail on the head, but Jack Dichter is the name that I. That's him. That's him. That's right. This is it. I, I'm going to tell everybody. Jack modeled. I don't know how many years ago, all right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you you captured his likeness. I mean, honestly, and a, a lot of people may not think that the you know when you're so uh, uh, expressive that the, you can't get the likeness as well. And honestly, that's Jack, all right. So uh, you know the other guy, I don't know who that is, all right. <laughs> but no I'm kidding, all right. The uh, so anyhow, you want to go on, and we'll take a look at some of them. These are your self portraits. This is this is what I think. When we, when he, you know, when you're talking, it's not a photo. This is what it's about. All right. And, um, and honestly, you're going to be able to bring this to your students. So, um, anything about these two? This is, um, the one on the left, especially, is, um, a, a, a good example of maybe some of the different ways that I work. So sometimes I will, and I think it'll be, become even clearer, uh, uh, using some other examples is that I'll start in, in the interior of the of the head and I'll work out out and um, I'm trying to feel feel the sense of touch is very important to me the sense I develop a sense and I think it's very important to students to develop the actual sense that they are touching what they they're feeling what it is that they see and I strive to do that and I take out any marks that seem false to me that don't have that. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, when we look at what, what's fascinating about this is it's not about that outside edge, really. You get the feeling that, you know, there's such a dimension in in, in the interior of, uh, you know, the portrait. And I, I, I just think that you create that dimension too. You create that depth, which I think, and, and then the, the, just the movement of your line work. I mean, that's one of the things that I think not only are you, are you feeling it, but you're really interpreting the way your mind works. You know, you're in tune. I always tell my students, and I think we both share this, and I'm, I'm sure you, you shared it with your students, but I try to tell my students, you need to get your mind, eye, and hand to be at the same place. Right. You know? And do you work at that? You, if you're going to be good at drawing, that's the, that's the key, you know? So um, you have it there. And I, I think that's one of the things you're going to bring to, uh, you know, to your students. And then uh, these are some more. Uh, just give you an idea. I know this model as well. All right. All so right. Um, uh, 
the angularity in your work. Is there anything to talk about? You know, like when look at this portrait, it's got some real angular lines. Is it uh, something that you concentrate on or is it uh, you just saw it in his face or? I just, I think I saw it. I think I was picking up some of the uh, movements that I felt in the mustache, the beard. And uh, uh, I often just um, uh, uh, subconsciously, I make, uh, associations with different kind of movements and rhythms. Um, I think that goes back to my training. It's uh, that, uh, it, but it's become subconscious now. It's become a part of the way that I work. Um, looking, looking for and finding, finding uh, rhythms and looking for and finding movement uh, through the entire drawing is very important. I think. Who are your favorite portrait painters? Well, it's. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, it's a mixed bag. I I uh, have um, I admire technical skill. So someone like uh, Sargent would be a remarkable example of that. I, but also, I think um, uh, Giacometti and Frank Arbach, um, because in my opinion, they were looking for they were trying to find the essence of this person, mm -hmm. and that that transcends just likeness it's we're more complicated than that and the the goal is to try and communicate that communicate that to the page is there's a humility it's hard to do and, and it, I, i'm not successful at it every time but it's not formulaic in the sense that i can't give you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to get there i can help you get there but everyone gets there in their own mm -hmm. in their own way yeah, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, what you're talking about, no formula, this is one of the most important things you need to teach students. You know, if you're painting, if, if everything kind of looks the same over and over again, you're not really seeing more, you know, and I think that this is one of the, the keys too. But uh, the energy in your work is the other thing that I really feel. And, um, you know, the likeness, you're really close to the likeness. And I think that, the, you know, when we talk in that that respect, being as, as quick these are quick pieces, aren't they? Or do, do you find yourself working on them? Do you do a lot of racing? What, what do you find yourself doing? There, I try and work as fast as I can mm -hmm. um, because there's, it's, you know, it's like um, uh, controlling the volume on a uh, piece of music you're listening to. I want to be able to have a loud passages and quiet passages. I want to be able to if if I'm feeling a strong emotion, I communicate that. Uh, if I'm feeling a quieter sense from uh, my relationship with a model, looking at the model, then I'll use a different kind of mark. And then uh, these are a little different. They're um, more, um, you know, skillful from the standpoint of uh, description. All right. The other ones are much more emotional when I look at those portraits. But the, this is a, a, another interesting piece. How did you come about doing this uh, this body of work? We're going to be looking at these different uh, series that you've worked on. This is uh, uh, done during COVID. So I was at home and I was teaching from home and I wanted to set up something complicated and um, using some of the stuff that I might use in a still life at, at uh, the college that I have here at home. And... Um, I wanted it to, um, the way that I started this is I start, and this is a, it's a bit like a, the way if, if Neil Welliver's uh, approach uh, to painting, which is insane in my opinion. And it's a little bit, it's, it's so hard to do. It's really exhausting, but, but I can get some good work working this way. I'll start with one point, usually in the center and I'll work my way out slowly in this sense, that's why it's a little bit less emotional until I don't move forward until all of the relationships are set. So there's, that's why there's no erasure. I didn't, there's no, nothing. I didn't erase anything here. It's just, I work my way out um, from the center and I work. That's how I, I weave the composition into the rectangle that way. I can decide which way to go. Um, uh, in order to develop. So I'm trying to keep the drawing balanced at all times. So it it you if you looked at it in its early state, it would probably not be recognizable as a as an object. Right. Right. 
And I think that's one of the things too. I, you can see the you can see the bones underneath this, which is very much like the portrait, because you can see where you've uh, orchestrated how we you want us to look at it. And there are passages that we read really abstractly, and then uh, the other passages very representationally. So it's a, it's a really felt piece. This is one of the other things, folks. Uh, looking at Ken's work, you're going to say this artist is able to bring feeling to the work. And I think this is the key. He's going to be able to teach you this kind of thing, which I think is real important for every one of you. So, um, and then of course, this one. This is a larger, a larger drawing than the last one. Um, okay. And um, I approach it the same way. And I was just looking for things around the house. I've got photographs of my children. Um, I've got a skull because all artists have to have a skull. Uh, I've got masks. Um, so I suppose there is some obvious symbolism here, but I, I was really looking to use more personal items in this, in this particular setup. So I, I, I think that it really has something to do with identity and um, uh, relationships, right? So um, the, the drawings, um, like of the photographs, for example, um, I pick and choose. I always pick and choose. I mean, drawing is all all about uh, the choices we make, and I'm not I'm not trying to put everything in. I'm trying to select what I think that the drawing needs. Um, so there's a, a Morandi postcard on the mirror at the top. Uh, there's um, and some other postcards on the mirror, and uh, again the mask that that's a Balinese mask that i happen to have here uh the large it's a large uh, snake it's a snake mask no um uh, so and also a halloween mask on its side and then of course the you know the the uh, nose and the glasses yeah 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 and you know when we look at contemporary work i mean we have Giorgio de Chirico, you know and we have joseph cornell i mean they they, they all ex mm -hmm. Put these kinds of images together and i think you get that feeling from the, the piece um and then we're going to go on to the next piece which is probably of all the pieces the most refined piece that you you have in your body of work and this is a this is a photograph that i took actually uh -huh. so what well, the idea here is to um distort the photograph uh so i i would a uh, fold and manipulate i'd print it out and manipulate it and the idea here is to uh, rethink, like for instance, if I took a photograph of one of my paintings and printed it out and then did something similar to that, it would be a way of opening up my thinking about image making, right? It would just present information in a different way. Um, so that's that's what's going on here. Uh, this is, And so this is one of my experiments. Um, yeah, it shows, you know, I mean, when we talk about your skillfulness, you know, people are going to think, well, he's, he's a very expressive painter, but you have, you run a range and every great teacher has to have that ability to do that. And, you know, you, then you find your temperament, you know, right. And this is what, this is what it, that everybody's going to understand that what we're going to see is a series of works and how they perhaps maybe the artist changes all right, and then settles into what the artist is really about. And Ken has done that. He's reached that. He, he's a mature artist that I feel, you know, if anything, you know, with the years of experience, he's learned a lot and he's got a lot to teach you. So um, the next one, I can see Giacometti here a little bit, right? Just the, in the nature of, uh, you know, just the, he's speaking, you know, in a way over your shoulder. But uh, what do you think about this one? I know you like this one. Uh, so um, this is a black paint on canvas. And uh, whenever I got close to an edge, I erased it. So I kept going back to the center of the head and working out and trying to eliminate uh, uh, the potential confinement of a contour. So um, that's the idea. And then also... I was thinking, you know, we were talking about Frank Arbach and his, probably the teacher that had the most influence on him is a man named David Bomberg. And Bomberg is an interesting career because he was hyper-realistic at some point. He was uh, very geometric at another point and abstract. And then when he was teaching, he would talk about, say, a nose. 
instead of instead of painting a nose the same way all the time why don't you find a new way why don't you try and find a new way to express the nose or express the mouth why does it have to be the same all the time yeah. and, and frank arbach took that to heart you know it was it, it, it measuring was always always important but the sense the sense that you're using that as a um, tool to get somewhere else is what it's about it's not an end in itself again hyper i would like my students to be able to draw any way they want to i want them to be able to draw as realistically as they want to and as loose as they want whatever whatever they should have that range in as you were saying in their own work so they can respond to uh respond to their own work and respond to whatever it is they're painting and drawing in a in a in a meaningful way and you know we all know this i mean after the years of working it is uh, the fact that we um understand that it can be interpreted in many different ways mm -hmm. yes i think arts of language you know and you really feel that in your work the uh the figurative pieces i'm just going to run through them uh anyone that you want to specifically talk about we can come back and talk okay. about this gives you the range of how ken is working all right and uh, those of you that don't know Giacometti or Frank Auerbach, you know, understand that they're significant uh, artists in the 20th century, very contemporary, and uh, even today. So I think, uh, if anything, this is a series of figurative work. Do you want to say anything about that? Uh, it's, it's some of the the uh, one of uh, me sitting on a chair, the nude, is a, a good example of working from the interior out. So to to uh, refine what I'm saying. I literally position my eye. I'm looking in the mirror. I position my eye on a particular point. I put the charcoal on the paper at that where I think that point is. And then I don't look at the paper at all. I look just at what I see and I just allow the, the hand to move. So what that, what that invites is uh, marks such as these, because I'm not I'm not uh, preconceiving uh, what it is that I'm seeing. And it's very, very difficult to overcome that mm -hmm. because we've seen so many images in our lives. We've seen, we have so we, we think we know what we see, <laughs> but the, the fact of the matter is that every time we look, we see something different. It, it, it's, it's uh, that we label as a cup or label as a person. Uh, we, we are constantly, filtering all of this visual information through our own sensibility. And that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. And I think, you know, we um, you communicated incredibly well. I mean, it's a, a wonderful piece, active, you know, um, we, we are able to, um, as you, you mentioned earlier, the essence, it is all about the essence. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, any decoration. It really is about the, uh, uh, the, the fundamentals, you know, and uh, how that uh, how that's communicated, but you can see the you can see the sensitivity of your line when you want to make really thin and sensitive line as well. And I think uh, you know so this is it, folks. I mean, you're going to be able to uh, take a lot of what Ken's teaching and and put it into your own work. All right, and and especially we're talking uh, you know beginning students need to understand that he Ken will work closely with you as well. Uh, in, a, in a way, we're going to see student work here in a, in a while, but the more advanced students, I mean, a lot of people are looking for uh, growth in their work, and Ken will be able to help you get that. So um, anything about this particular piece? Because this is one of the paintings. It's, it's a painting. It's a, I think this is a, might be acrylic. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but a lot of scraping. I'm, I'm working in it back into it with a palette knife. Uh, like in the head, for instance, and pulling out, uh, flattening some areas, and you know, so I'm playing around with this, this kind of the plasticity of space, right? It can be, if we think of, if we think about, there are different ways to think about space. If we just look at the history of visual art and think about uh, Byzantine art and how it has a tendency to be flat relative to what we might imagine art to be today, it's still spatial, right? So playing around with this idea of these, these two-dimensional areas and three-dimensional areas is an interesting uh, approach for me. Yeah. You have a real cubist kind of feel here, very planular. You know, it's a strong, 
element. But everything, when you look at Ken's work, you're going to realize that everything is in relationship to each other. It's not like it's just one area that's distinct from another. It's really that they actually are married to each other. And I think that the, that's what makes the work. Now, this is a, 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 a interesting one because it's sort of, if you were to say, um, th did you capture um, the, um, I would say, uh, the age of us, all right? We're both in this stage of, of aging, all right? And you, I think you carried this one in an interesting way, all right? Uh, what do you think about the, if you have anything to say, uh, you know? The, the, you know, it's like the the naked light bulb effect. There is there is something uh, right over my head <laughs> shining down on my white hair, which I still like to think is blonde, but that was when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm searching. If you look at the background, for example, think about how many different times I painted that mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again. And it was for multiple reasons. One is that the color color is complicated, and uh, you know it's a white. The local color is white, but obviously it changes depending on the lighting in the room. So when I would pick up a different color sensation i'd put it down i'd put it down so the whole the goal is to make the space behind the head uh seem like it's there right so um uh if you look carefully at the background for instance you'll see areas are lighter and darker it's not all the same and it's again it's based on my observations right that it's a dark we see darks against lights lights against darks and uh, so i painted i worked Along, I wanted to sustain a painting mm -hmm. and try and keep it fresh. That's that was the goal here. Well, you captured you captured a likeness, but more of a sense of caricature. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really has a, a, and you can do that too. I mean, that's that's it. There's there's a great example of that. You know, so these pieces I think were uh, are are good, good pieces that way. Give everybody an understanding of how Ken is just pushing. You know, really, when we do self portraits, I guess the thing is. It's, uh, first of all, we've never really seen a reflection of ourselves, really. I mean, uh, right. you know, it's like the nature of how we see is uh, people see us differently. You know, we don't can see the reflection, essentially. So uh, that's it. And then you have these still lights, which I put them in mostly for students that are wanting to take your classes so they can understand that, that you will go over the basics. And yes, you know, so uh, even though when you look at the expressive work that you have, you have the skill to really teach, you know, everything that anybody who's starting or even people who need to have a refresher, you know, you have that uh, that skill. So I think that's where they are. And, you know, here's your series of uh, other still lifes. I'm Children's gonna... voice. Yep. Which is fascinating. I mean, it's uh, unique and you can see the expressive quality even in the still lifes. I'm going to pass through these, but we're going to talk about this because this is the next uh uh series that you i find interesting uh so the this is a this I, i'm not sure it's like um for a while there it uh, with the with the cardinal the cardinal um i was dri driving down the road and out of the corner of my eye I saw this cardinal and it was chasing i could even see the grasshopper it was chasing uh in the air it caught it in its beak and hit the side of my car and I pulled over and, and the bird was dead and it was just so beautiful. I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, I wanted to, I, so I took the bird home and I painted the, the bird and I would keep it in the freezer. And, you know, I know that that might seem weird to some of you, but if, if you want to, if <laughs> I didn't want to waste the bird, I didn't want to just bury the bird or throw the bird away. It was a beautiful um, color, uh, colors, and in the in the uh, painting of the cardinal, the, you can see there's still there's still the 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 grasshopper still in its beak. Mm -hmm. It grabbed the grabbed the grasshopper just as it hit the side of the car. Uh, unfortunately, so um, this is a way um, I think of uh, kind of uh, paying tribute to the life of that cardinal. <laughs> Oh, the, yeah. you know, to go back with this, and this is something that I think we both agree on, you really want to draw it first. Right. So you really understand it and how you see it. 
mm -hmm. and, then, and then go to into the painting because you bring that awareness and knowledge to that you've experienced in the drawing into the painting, you know. And the different kind of feathers, the different kind of uh, movements yeah. that you see. And I have a, I have a cardinal in my freezer, just so you know. <laughs> and I it was a dead one on the side of the road. So everybody, <laughs> uh, you know, all I can tell you is, you know, we this is was so much fun talking to Ken because we really are on the same uh, <laughs> wavelength. All right, uh, so you can see his expressive quality. Why didn't you go after the descriptive properties of the, of the cardinal? Why did you go after the expressive quality? You know, in other words, uh, it was. I think it was the. Um, um, it had something to do with the 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 death of the cardinal. I think it had something to do with. Um, there's a, um, a stillness and a um, and a beauty to to the bird to the dead bird, and I wanted to capture that as quickly as possible. So I wasn't so much interested in. Uh, anatomy as I was interested in getting that emotion uh, and uh, the color colors that I saw out yeah and, it, uh, and and so then of course you do the, these these sketches but here's another one that's kind of interesting the the sandwich um, this was uh I was a fellow at the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts which is an artist calling down in Amherst Virginia and they would provide lunch. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great place that because you you uh, you focus on your work. That's what you do. You go to your studio every day, and then you all meet for dinner and and conversation. And there's usually an open studio, or they also uh, have poets and musicians there. So it's a really interesting mix of people. So this was um, one of the sandwiches, and I wanted to just see. Uh, experiment. I, I tried to experiment a little bit with this and try and make it a little bit less literal. So, for instance, if you look at the the bread on the top, it's not moldy, I promise. But what I did was I take my palette knife and I move it in an unexpected way uh, instead of following the, you know, the planes are there. So I thought, well, this is wet paint. Let's try just another kind of movement or introducing another kind of movement into the painting. So uh, that's and it was a it was a, the light was um it was morning light so it's very blue it's white paper but it's very blue um at this particular moment so i wanted to capture that too yeah so it really i, I like this piece it makes me hungry <laughs> <laughs> now we go to the architectural pieces and these are some of the well when we talk in terms of architecture uh actually this is a series of uh, uh your forest series so I'm just going to show the, the, them what you've done, and then uh, you know we can discuss certain pieces. I know there are a lot of them, so we're not going to take everybody's time, uh, you know, because I really do want you to get the most out of this le lecture. So, uh, but you know, you can always, uh, you know, take Ken's class and pick his brain. All right, uh, that's that's for sure. So, what do you want? What do you want, like to say about this group? Um, well, many of them were done at Great Falls, Maryland side. And uh, some were done in other places. Uh, the um, I think what I'm trying to do, uh, especially with this one, for instance, is uh, this was done in Florida, and it was a park, a park, uh, undeveloped park on the edge of the water. So these are Australian pines. They're very shallow rooted. They're not native, obviously, to Florida. So if there's a big storm, they usually topple over. So these are just toppled over due to erosion of the beach uh, and, and wind into the water and they, they since it was an undeveloped park they leave them there so i was fascinated by those trees and all of this clutter and trying to get a sense of space through through these trees and also to try and characterize the complexity of a root system <laughs> and these uh, are, are driftwood so the the this one is a driftwood this one is a broken um, uh, pine trees that I stumbled upon in the middle of a forest. And they were just, it, was, it, it had stormed the night before. So the, the, the pines are very orange when they're, when they're uh, newly broken like this, newly uh, fallen. So This one, yeah. reminds me a lot of Frank Auerbach in a lot of ways, just the nature of the way my eye reads this, you know, reads it. And I think, um, um, 
you know, one of the things just to talk, uh, open up the, the, you know, the discussion on abstraction, because I think you really are, that's a, an, an important part of your work. So this is, uh, this has to do uh, with, um, you know, all, all paintings, whether they're representational or not, uh, I, I function on an abstract level. So, and uh, the, um, let's see, a, a, a famous uh, painter, I can't think of his name. He said, uh, the success of an abstract painting has something to do with uh, suggesting something real to the viewer and, and the suggestion and something that's say realistic, it's about suggesting something abstract to the viewer. <laughs> so uh, in this case, uh, starting with short strokes and starting with the, say the orange, and building the composition around that and not trying to just building the rhythms with those strokes yeah. and, and contrasting the rhythms of the fallen trees with the verticals of the trees that are in the background. And then you can, it's winter, so you can see through the trees and you can see these are mountains actually in the distance yeah. uh, because I painted this in Amherst. But the whole idea too is to point of view. I think that's important in most of my work. What's the point of view? What's your, uh, uh, what, in other words, what, what's, uh, uh, in this case, I'm starting with what's closest to me. You know, I'm defining that and then moving back through the space to a position that's in, in the distance. So it really shows um, uh, multiple viewpoints in the sense that I'm looking down, I'm looking across, I'm looking up at the same time. Yeah, this is the, uh, this piece has uh, so much emotion in it too. The, um, and then of course this one and uh, this one. So you get, everybody gets an idea of what Ken's uh, work is like, but you can see the, the sensitivity to, even the design has a certain abstract quality about it. Uh, you know, one of the things you're seeing about Ken's work is one of a kind. Uh, we, this is one of the things that's important about really understanding artists. And that is that their work uh, speaks of them and you can see his sensitivity, but you can also see the kind of stylistic qualities that make his work unique and personal. And I think that that's what we have. And then, of course, there's that one that I said was like a Frank Auerbach. Mm -hmm. there. Uh, the architecture uh, as well. You do so. You're, you're not only you're dealing with the natural form, but you're dealing with uh, you know uh, man-made objects. And uh, is there any difference? Do you want to talk about the any of these, especially this car series, which I think really fascinates me. One of the reasons I wanted to paint uh, paint in uh, junkyards is because the the uh, the the colors and the uh, and the shapes um, that are available there, and also um, uh, is it, it's a junkyard or it's like uh, people would come in and buy buy a part of a car so it might be missing the next day the door might be gone <laughs> so i'd have to decide whether to change it or keep it uh but that's uh this has a also those different points of view in it you can see this this junk that's in the bottom of the painting is really i'm looking down and then i'm looking across and up uh to the to the distant spaces and just the challenge of trying to make sense of it all you know constantly challenging myself i i tell my students to do the same uh, paint things that you don't know how to paint uh, don't paint the same thing the same way try something new try something challenging to yourself and i think that you know when i look at your body of work i mean you, you see the range of your subjects you see the um you know the, the nature of what it is to uh for everybody here to understand what painting is about right i think ken has you know certainly with the years of experience has really immersed himself in understanding that and and communicating in his own personal way which i feel you know truly um i'm impressed with all your work and i think uh, you know if um you know when the students that do study with you i'm sure you're going to guide them along a path that's going to get them to to the, where they want to go and uh that's where we go into the student work all right and uh ken uh, You've taught at a number of places. Uh, probably have had thousands of students, I would imagine, by this time in your life, right? And I think, um, you know, if anything, uh, the thing that I'm going to ask you uh, to tell us a little bit is, what do you get from your work and your teaching? Well, from the, it's 
the the relationship between my own work and the student work and the teaching is that it keeps um it's exciting it's 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 interesting i love teaching and i love teaching because it stimulates me to uh to uh to paint you know to i want to be authentic i want to say, i i don't want to be that person that never paints or taught uh painted 20 years ago and taught trying to teach painting to students i want to be able to do what i say uh you know i want to be able to show them so i do lots of demonstrations and this student work too this this is a collage and i think the next one's a collage as well and that's um you know that's a, actually a collage and that teaches a beginning student how to um think in terms of value, how to simplify uh, down to essential, the essentials. So they so can only talk, three tones. Yeah, when we talk about uh, uh, collage, explain that. Well, uh, have the students tear the paper. Uh, they're not allowed to use their scissors. And each, it's as if, the, I think the, probably the student did uh, a little bit here, but the the it's almost as if uh, each each piece of paper is like a brush stroke. A brush stroke that they're building they're building the space using these it's very very abstract in the beginning too you know they they you can't they know where it is and i know where it is but if somebody saw it out of the context of the classroom they wouldn't recognize it as a as a still life until much later in the process so it teaches them that too it teaches them how how uh, images are made that it's not uh just about the literal it's fascinating. You know, here you are working with paper, which I think, you know, we see a number of artists that have done that. I mean, it's really an interesting medium to just, you know, for people, truthfully, mm -hmm. you go to the beach and take an old magazine and a glue stick and you can, you don't have to take paint and get the sand in your paints. You can just really do things at the beach with, really with paper, which I think is a, a fun thing too. Um, the, uh, and these really, these are remarkable pieces. I mean, very sophisticated. All right. Uh, yes. you know, and I think, uh, you know, well seen, well drawn. And I know you asked your students to do that. So let me ask you another question. What do you feel is important in the work of your students? Well, I, I think to to um, for them to be able to learn the fundamentals uh, of uh, their art form and to use that in a in a uh, learn to use that in a personal way. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that hap that happens if you stick with it. If if the students stick with it, they uh, they're able to uh, understand their own voice to to feel it in their work. And I think that's the goal. The goal is for them to be able. To, it's like learning how to uh, music. You know, it's the difference between uh, learning how to play something that someone else has written and composing your own piece of music. Wow. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that you know, we, of course, we both share this kind of understanding i mean this is one of the things that we were schooled with i mean we everybody's got to understand we we studied under both ken and myself studied under some really fantastic people we share teachers all right and when he, ken said he's really motivated to be an artist teacher i was too that that the, the that group of uh, teachers that we had uh at au particularly for me you you went off to boston but they were um you know they were so inspiring and they and they brought an understanding that I don't think, you know, when I look back on, uh, could that happen again with a group of people? Well, it's going to be hard to find those people again. All right. So I think that this is one of the things that we both have benefited from, and we really want to bring that to you all. I think, you know, when we now when we're looking at this, like for instance, a piece like this, uh, what is it that you want? Uh, you think is important for that those students to achieve? Well, this this is a good example of how she's finding uh, really the uh, the energy of the landscape, you know, by being very selective, using lots of straight lines, and 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 uh, it really speaks to her, about her in the way that she sees. Um, so I want the student. I want depending on the level of student. I want the student to feel confident all levels i want them to feel as though they've accomplished something by the end of the course that they're able to you know, i tell my beginning drawing students at the end of the course you'll be able to draw anything you want to in proportion and uh, you'll be able to compose compose the page you'll be able to balance the page and then 
that's very important for beginning students to be able to do, to get that confidence, to be able to do, know how to do it. How do you go about doing this? What tools are available? Teaching them, uh, uh, like uh, giving them a toolbox that they can use to uh, help them make images. Yeah. And since you have contemporary influences, uh, do you share those with your students? Absolutely, I do. I'm looking all the time at uh, contemporary artwork and, and art of the past. Uh, I teach by showing examples from the now and also examples from the past. Mm -hmm. So our, our artists look at paintings a little bit differently than art historians. You know, I'm not really interested in, in their personal life, uh, life of the artist uh, in so much as I'm more interested in the, the image what what is the what do I see? How how is it organized? Why does it have this effect on me? Mm -hmm. uh, you know that's what I'm interested in uh, finding out. Well, you know um, when I look at your work, you know I I can tell that you breathe art. All right, it, I mean it's just there, and I think that you, you can see that the people that are watching this video, honestly, uh, you can see that the students do too. I mean the, the growth in their awareness and that. I think is real important, and I and I feel that you do a great job sharing that with them. So I'm, I'm uh, you know, incredibly impressed. I think, uh, and I think that uh, you know, now, what I would say to people who are watching this video, um, you know, start thinking about taking some courses with Ken, because honestly, we got him teaching how many courses this. He joined us, but it's not like he's teaching one course. He's got quite a few courses. Four, I think, four, yeah, four courses. And what are they so that people know? So, uh, uh, well, let's see. I have a, a figure class on Friday evenings, I believe. Um, I have a, a painting, a, a kind of a intermediate uh, level painting class, I think, during the week, at least one. I have a landscape class. And I have um, probably another drawing class. I can't recall that at all. Well, they're they're up on our on our website, uh, yellowbarnstudio.com. All right, for those of you that are not familiar with the Yellow Barn, I know some of you are going to be watching this on YouTube. You're going to think, well, uh, can you study with Ken? Yeah, you can study with him. Um, none of them are virtual classes, right? I think all of them are. Right. On but the thing is that you know Ken's uh, just joining us for the first time. He's going to be really exploring some other things that we're interested in. Uh, uh, as far as uh, having him join us uh, and, and, the, and the growth of our program. But right now we're going to hold you in suspense and not really tell you about that. But the thing is, um, you know, what, what, what really truly get a start with Ken, those of you that are in the area and can and study with him, because I really think you're going to really benefit from, um, you know, his experiences and uh, and your growth. Well, I, I guarantee it. I know Ken. I know his teaching over all those years. And I know what he brought to his students. The time I met him, I met him at Washington Lee. I guess it was Washington Lee, right? And um, and um, I remember you having a pinhole camera in the yes. uh, in the window, all right. And anybody that doesn't know about a pinhole camera, that was pretty unique and uh, and impressive, all right. So I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do that. All right. I turned the I turned the the studio into a pinhole camera. Yeah, into, into a pinhole camera. It was really pretty wild. Uh, and he, so he's is experimental, and he's uh, but he also comes with a, a lot of background and and the base the basics. And I think that's one of the things that you're going to find out. So Ken, I think uh, we pretty well talked about uh, everything. Is there anything else that you might want to add before you're, we go tonight? I think we covered it. Yeah, we covered it. So those of you who are watching, yellowbarnstudio.com, Ken Conley, all right, is uh, the, our instructor here. And, uh, you know, all you have to do is go to our website and uh, actually just click on the, the, his class and it'll take you to the registration page and you'll be able to uh, register. We just added him. So he's not in the Glen Echo catalog right now. He's uh, just on the website but we're gonna really promote them because I think it's a, a great opportunity to have them. So with that, I'm gonna to say to all of you uh, tonight, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I uh, hope to see you and Ken hopes to see you, all right, at the Yellow Barn. Take thank care. You.